Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome here to sunny California and welcome to the Mercedes EQS. This is such an exciting car because it truly represents, or at least S-Class has in the past, the pinnacle of German automotive engineering. And here we are driving the electric S-Class for the first time. <laughs> This is the new Mercedes EQS, and I really can't tell you how excited I am to experience this car. I have to tell you right off the bat, I don't love the looks of this thing personally. I think it looks a little bit weird, but it does depend on spec. For example, there was a really nice deep blue one here with a tan interior that did look pretty good, but you have to put looks aside. This is one of the most aerodynamic cars, if not the most aerodynamic car ever produced. And even more important than that, this is the best the Germans have to offer. This is so exciting. We have here the EQS 450 rear wheel drive. Now I'll try to shoot another video with the EQS 580 all wheel drive, uh, but this is sort of the entry level model here in the US. And this particular car is optioned up with the crazy hyper screen. We only get the big battery in the US, so it's a 107, 108 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. I think 112, 113 installed, somewhere around there. A little bit over 400 miles of range. Wow, this thing is looking pretty good. So let's talk about EQS. In this video, this is purely gonna be my driving impressions of the car. Uh, I've already gone through and done walk-arounds on this car, shown you the huge tailgate, shown you the interior, and I'll link to those. And I would suggest watching those videos First, because I have such a short amount of time with this vehicle, I'll take you on a very quick tour right now, but there's so much technology, so much integration, so much going on here. The seats do fold down flat, and I love that it's a hatchback design, um, that it really needs to be like, let's just focus on the driving here right now. You can see here, this door opens with a push. You have to forgive some of the noise. We're right near the airport. This one does not have the executive rear seats and wow, is it lovely in these pillows here in the back, this gorgeous roof. Look at that hyper screen, pretty crazy. We'll talk about that in a little bit. All EQSs I just learned in the US, by the way, have 10 degrees of rear steer. It was rumored for a little while that you'd have to option it or it'd be a monthly subscription, but no. My friend who does the product planning here said he pushed hard and now all will have 10 degrees of rear steering as standard. That's insane. Standard is four and a half degrees for other markets, but there we go. Other than that, this particular spec, Again, you know, just about $100,000 base price. It's actually, I think, $1,000 or $2,000 less than the Combustion S-Class from a base price perspective. Um, but overall, this one has the massive heads-up display. It has the beautiful interior. It has the hyper screen. It's got all the good headlights. And I can't wait to go drive this car. So what do you say we get inside, talk about some more specs, and then take it for a blast here in the city in the canyons and on the highway. Just a quick break from the main video to let you know about the new Out of Spec podcast. This is a brand new podcast that we started a few weeks ago. We haven't really told anyone about it, but there's a YouTube channel called Out of Spec Podcast. It'll be linked in the description and in the pinned comment where you can go and listen to some of the Out of Spec team top cars and I try and get on there when possible. It's an absolute blast, great show. And but if you're interested in cars, you're absolutely gonna love it. You join me inside of the EQS and first off, I've sat in this car before and it just feels nice. <laughs> uh, something about the quality of Mercedes products uh, I've always loved and certainly no compromise here. Uh, this one has the hyper screen, which is this massive expansive screen across the dash. And honestly, they have one car here with the normal screen. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to take a look. Hopefully I can get that on video for you guys. And well, I think it does everything this can do. This is cool. Big giant thing of glass, but it's three individual displays. It's not like it's one giant display. That's okay. This center display though is gorgeous. It's so snappy and it's actually even snappier than when I experienced it the last time uh, when I drove or I didn't drive it, but I played around with the pre-production car in a studio uh, like six months ago. So man, I'm so, we just got to drive it. Let me run through the specs. 107.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. They claim 31 minute, zero or 10 to 100% charging time. 31 minutes to 100%. It doesn't say 80 here. Maybe that's a typo. I don't know, but that's what it says. It shows a 
200 kilowatt charger, so that's my guess as a peak. My goal, let's run this thing down as low as possible so we can try some charging today uh, and see how that does. Uh, rear axle steering air, uh, 10 degrees, air suspension standard, and is all the crazy stuff. Six 100 watt USB ports, which actually got me to clear some of my cards for the videos today, which was awesome. So we're good. Let's get the seating set. So, ooh, it goes pretty far low. I can extend the thigh extensions nicely. Wow, that's lovely. Steering wheel's huge. It's like a cruise ship. And the dash is really high. You really get this odd seating position because the hood falls down in front of you. I like it though. Uh, let me turn on the seat massager. So I'm gonna go to the hyper screen. I'm going to click the home button. That's what I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna go to comfort. It's really the same as other MBUX cars. And I think I'll go for an activated. Actually, no, we're in an S class. We'll go for the wave massage. You can even do workout massages, which is crazy. There's so many different ones. You can choose an intensive or non-intensive. I'm gonna turn the audio off. I've programmed in the twistiest road I could find. Um, and let's just drive in the city. We have about nine miles to get over there. So first off, I have D plus, D, and D minus. So D minus says increase recuperation. The Germans that call it recuperation instead of regeneration. Uh, normal and no. So D plus, let's start in this. Tapping the accelerator pedal. Whoa, so it's, it's two turns lock to lock because watch. Okay, so just to demonstrate. One turn, two turns. But look at how much the car is pivoting with this rear steer. Oh my God. I've never felt such a huge car turn on a dime like that. That's almost magical, I have to say. That's really cool. Okay, so there's literally no regen at this point. The car is coasting. I touch the brakes, comes to a stop, and then auto hold comes on. If I go normal regen, let's try this. So power out. We get some regen, not much. Switch on headlamps. I had it in parking lights for a photo. And then you still have to use the brakes. Hmm. Um, it says exit this way. That's where we're going. And then how I want to drive it is increase regen. Instantly, I can feel the throttle mapping tuning to elongate the pedal for this. Now I'm lifting off. It's pulling us all the way down to four miles an hour, two, all the way to a stop, one pedal driving. No way, that's awesome. Let me pause the video because I got to figure out how to get out of this parking lot and then we'll hit the road. We are out of the parking lot and we are going. First off, it's dead silent in here. A car just drove by, I didn't hear it. Listen, I don't know if you can hear this. Let me turn the fans down. It's just the whiff of the cars going by, wow. So isolated, that's wonderful. So this one is the slow one, five and a half seconds, zero to 60, three mid threes in the horsepower, low fours in the torque. I think it's like 334 or something. Uh, I'll put the exact numbers here, but you know, the exact numbers, I like to look at motors and kilowatts. I don't know exactly what it is. So I have the regen in the increased regenerative setting and instantly I'm noticing something odd, which is when you drive it one pedal, it's really smooth, good calibration, lots of regen too. But the weird thing is, especially at low speed, is the brake pedal falls away from you. I've never experienced this. Because we have increased regen on, it's blending friction brakes. So it must not be a brake by wire system and it physically is pulling the brake pedal away from me, which is, I guess, something I'll have to get used to. I've never experienced that type of brake pedal calibration before. Wow, it is so smooth. The quality of this car instantly comes out above anything. I have visual uh, augmented reality coming up on the hyper screen here. I have augmented reality coming up on my heads up display and it's just crazy. So we'll try the acceleration here. Let's put it in sport mode. So I have everything in sport. We're only one mile into this and I've never driven a car that drives like this. Floor it. Oh, launch is hard actually, damn. Okay, the off the line is quick, and that's one of the benefits of getting, oh, actually, we need to go straight here, whoops. Sorry to the people of San Francisco. Um, that's one of the benefits of a permanent magnet motor is you get all the instant torque from zero, which is wonderful. So now it says it wants me in the left lane because we're gonna go south on this road. Let me take it back out of comfort mode. 
that's plenty fast. Honestly, you don't need any more. The point of the EQS is not to be a dragster, and there's already two versions faster than this car. There's the EQS 580, which is all-wheel drive formatic. I think that will do well. That, by the way, comes standard with the hyperscreen. And then there's the EQS 53 AMG that will also do well. So my butt and my back are getting a massage. I have the air-conditioned seats on. I sampled the Burmester sound system, really good. I'll play around with that a little bit more. And all the touch points just feel so nice. Personally, not into the hyper screen. I mean, it's nice. I really love this big thing. And maybe if I was getting one, I would get it because I'd want the all-wheel drive, so sure. But I think the standard screen, at least in photos, looks wonderful, and then you get wood on the dash. And part of this car is blending this sort of modern touch of electric with these, you know, digital displays with these beautiful air vents that are, like, feel, like, so nice. Everything feels so nice. Really impressive. I will say the grain of the leather here on the center console, though, isn't like a smooth leather like the seat and I think that's the only thing that doesn't feel great. I think I noted that actually when I did my walk around now that I'm thinking about it, but I think it's for uh, for um, uh, roughness and it's there for durability is the word I'm looking for, for if you're like rubbing up against it, you know, driving around with your knee on there. So, okay, seating position, wonderful, wonderful seating position, sitting nice and low with the massage, I keep talking about, I love massaging seats, it's so cool. The rear steer is a big standout, and so is the throttle pedal calibration. Here I put it back in comfort, I'm driving in increased recuperation mode. We'll have to test to see if it remembers that on key up when I get out and get back in. I'll keep an eye to see if it recalls the mode. If not, it's just one click on the left pedal. There's another mode too, which is if you hold the left pedal, you get automatic regen, it's called intelligent regen, which will increase the regen as you get closer to the car in front. Let's try that. Accelerating up. Oh yeah, big regen here. Whoa, big brakes. Like it just like, it's like adaptive cruise all the time. That's cool. I've never really experienced that much regen before. Tuesdale Drive, that's where it wants us to go. Great sight lines around the car, really nice. Uh, very few blind spots actually, considering how big this car is, there's just glass everywhere. So that's really nice. Wow. This has to be the most comfortable car I've ever driven. And I've driven Rolls Royces and other things, but this has sort of an air of drivetrain smoothness that those cars can't even match. And I've driven the new S-Class and I've driven all these amazing cars but this instantly is unlike anything I've ever been in. And it holds you at a stop, even in this one pedal mode. So it, the power just went off. That was weird. I think it was like holding us on the throttle and then it switched to friction brakes because the pedals firmed up, uh, which means that there's pressure in the braking system because it's a hydraulic braking system. Um, very interesting car. Now I'm not sure what the EPA rates the range on this car, but I think it's 400 and 70 miles or 460 miles WLTP. It's probably going to be in the mid to high threes, honestly, in the US. I don't know if it has been rated, at least at the time that I'm recording this. I don't believe it has. And, um, you know, certainly details will come out. This video is going to be a little out of date from a range perspective. So just check the Mercedes website for the exact range figure. Either way, it's going to have plenty of range. 107.8 kilowatt hour usable battery pack is awesome. If what they claim this 30 minute 10 to 100% charging curve is true, Wow, I remember speaking with some of the Mercedes engineers about their strategy for this car. They said, you know, really good route planning, plug and charge with Electrify America, so you get that Tesla-like experience where you roll up to the charger, plug in, and in theory it should work. We'll try that. It's still an early car, so they might have some bugs to work out, but they said it works, so we'll we'll try it. If it works, that'd be amazing. Um, I've driven production cars where it doesn't work. <laughs> so that'll be cool to try. And overall, they, they were like, this is just gonna be the most, the best EV. They, they were just convinced, so I'm like, great. And charging curve was gonna be amazing. That was the last one. Full power, whoa. It's quick. I mean, not that it's meant to be a fast car, but you can hustle this thing around. Anyway, driving around the city has amazing calibration of suspension, of rear steering. The braking thing's a little weird. Braking is weird with this increased regen, how it pulls the brake pedal away from you when it blends friction brakes. That, right now, I'm not into. I'll update you throughout the drive if that changes. Again, this is my first driving impressions. I'll have a review once I've spent today and tomorrow with the cars on Inside EVs US if you're curious. And yeah, it's gonna be a long video. It's gonna be me rambling. It's the EQS. It's one of the most important cars of the year for me personally, because this is what 
Daimler is offering. This is their new scalable product architecture that every future Mercedes, or at least most future electric Mercedes will be built off of. So a lot lies on this thing. <laughs> it is, it's got some juice folks, got some juice. Personally, I like to drive these cars really nice and easy in comfort mode and play around with that rear steer. Oh, you can get it a little bit out of sync. Oh, but that's kind of cool. Oh, I love it. All right, let's go hit up some twisty roads and see how this thing drives. Well, after spending a few more minutes with the EQS, I just took it for one exit down the highway. I have to say, my comments about this car being truly the most serene and luxury luxurious vehicle when I'm just speechless uh, is totally true I find myself like talking quieter there's no reason to I'm always loud I don't understand it's so crazy so now we're on some good roads let's put it into sport mode and test some of this stuff by the way sound system great sound system really is bass is strong you can Put the EQs kind of however you want. Uh, Burmester always does a good job, but I think specifically here they really tuned it well. Um, 314 miles of range projected based off of driving style with, uh, let's see if I click the EQ menu, 81% state of charge. So this is by no means a good uh, metric of um, range. Hey, this is a good spot to try some braking. So let's try an emergency stop. Well, you feel a lot of ABS through the pedal, braking performance is strong, and it rocked a little bit like that just because it's so heavy and softly sprung because we're in, uh, you know, this is a comfortable car. So I have to say the braking was fine. Pedal's pretty soft though. Um, and I don't, I officially don't like the regen situation with the brake pedal where it pulls the brake pedal away from me. And then because it's building pressure in the braking system, when you touch it, it's a firm pedal when you add braking pressure to it. For the most part though, you'll be able to drive one pedal and you won't have to use the brake pedal. The alternative option is if you drive it in normal recuperation, let's just try this. No one's behind us. And I touch the brake pedal again. Yeah, now I get a totally normal feeling brake pedal although i can still tell it's doing regen and friction brake blending hmm i would have expected better brake pedal blending from mercedes really i would have everything else i think that's my only negative so far styling brake pedal feeling is not not tuned so well and i think it's a little it's a little laggy too here let's try it throttles instant brake pedal yeah hmm Definitely goes into emergency braking quick enough. Not laggy, but mm, just doesn't feel right. So, whoa, let's go drive this thing on some good roads. I can't wait. It feels so nimble. I mean, the wheelbase feels tiny. I mean, I would almost describe like turning the wheel this much and getting that much rotation feels like a little Miata or something. It's crazy. Um, this rear steering system is the most aggressive rear steer I've ever felt. Same amount of rear steer as Hummer EV, by the way, and they put their whole logo about this crab walk situation. This thing, whoa, it's nimble. This is like a 5,000 pound car and it's just, just whoa, holy smokes. They, chassis guys, the suspension guys, the steering guys knocked it out of the park on this car and I haven't even pushed it around a corner yet and I just am so in love with this thing. For New York City, cruising around the city, for San Francisco around here, can you get a more comfortable car? And inside it's beautiful, the interior is great. And you don't have to look at the outside because I'm not going to beat around the bush. I don't think it's a good looking car. But styling, again, I always tell you guys, doesn't factor into my reviews. I'm more on the, the technical side, everything like this. So first impressions, amazing quality, great acceleration. Look at this. I'm just going to go 20 miles an hour. Let's bring it up to 20. We're on an uphill. Punch it. Instant power. Boom. And it's strong and it's dead silent. Interestingly, the rear motor on this car uh, is a six pole motor. I think it's the only EV with a six pole motor. It has two individual three phase windings, which reduces motor cogging, but it also means better response, less uh, heat loss because uh, each pole is doing less work. So you have uh, more efficiency this way. And certainly maybe it's a little bit more complicated to engineer, but that's the point of the S class is to go out of your way to make the best possible, no compromise solution. And that motor is just an example of it. Now, look, you know, Lucid Air, we'll bring it up. This is not a comparison video. I just drove the Lucid Air and 
I'll tell you right off the bat, this is worlds ahead in terms of luxury. Uh, in terms of feeling through the steering wheel with the rear steer, in terms of noise, in terms of integration of everything. Oof. But but of course the Lucid has the, the range and maybe the technical uh, bits that are better than this car from a charging perspective, from a efficiency perspective. Very interesting cars, very complementary cars actually. They both excel in different areas. So mm, we'll have a different video about which one I would choose later on. But for now, let's get some of this traffic out of the way. Let's go push this around some corners, shall we? You join me in some of the hills above San Francisco right now. Amazing roads that we're on. I have the car in sport mode. I am going to back off the stability control. So I'm gonna pull this down. I'm gonna click the car. I'm gonna click ESP off. And this way I can just feel the chassis a little bit more. We're not gonna go shredding. The point of the S-Class is not to be a performance car. That's what, you know, it's why are we up here driving it in the mountains? It's a little contradictory to the purpose of the car, but I think it gives us a good impression as to how they did some of the tuning for on limit driving. But I, I don't think this car encourages you to drive fast. Speaking of, let's just get up here and do a full launchy launch in sport mode, shall we? So coming to a stop, blending brakes. Braking systems, just odd. Okay, hard on the brakes, flooring it and go. Good launch. Every time I floor it, it comes up with content in current vehicle position not available. There's 70, there's allegedly 80. Fine, fine power. This is the slow one, the slowest one you can buy. It still rips. It's way faster than the Taycan 4 I was just in. And honestly, the car doesn't encourage you to drive fast. I personally would be happy with this level of power. Whoa. We are getting bad efficiency driving like this, but I kind of need to. I want to run the battery down. I really only have the car for five hours today, no joke. Uh, and then tomorrow I get to have the all wheel drive one. So, <laughs> first off, the car sizing on the road feels right, but because the hood dips down, it's very different than a Taycan experience or even a Lucid experience where you kind of get a sense of the width of the car looking out. Um, this car, kind of just you don't see anything in front of you it's just it ends at the windshield bottom and because I have the seat all the way down the dashboard comes up really high and that actually blocks a little bit of the roadway right in front of the car but I don't mind this I prefer like a cockpit driving style let's try some slalom really quick just to feel how the car is balanced So good, the chassis guys, I have to meet them. I have to meet the chassis guys. They've made magic with this car. This is a heavy car that turns on a dime and you can tell it's heavy because I can hear the tires squealing, but it's so effortless inside, wow. So if you live, you know, I guess, okay, braking system because there's a bicycle and a car coming. Passing power, full power, going around everything. Perfect at that kind of stuff. Uh, if you live in the hills and you want a luxurious car, which is where like most opulent homes are, you know, you go to LA, you go to San Francisco, up here is where all the big homes are. You are gonna have the best time driving this car up to your house, no question, because it's magical. That's the best way I can use to describe this, this rear steer. There's almost no body roll. The car just pivots and goes. It's insane. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not uh, like crazy fast or capable like a Tycon would wipe the floor of this thing, right? But what's impressive is the way that it goes about driving. And this is where I think the EQS really gets let down in a lot of the EV world, if you will. Everyone just looks at price, zero to 60, range, and maybe if they're like somewhat halfway keen, charging, peak charging speed, which never tells the full story. And this is like how a car is judged. And how I judge a car is, I certainly take all of that into account. That's neat, you know, necessary information to know, but it's all about the feeling. And the feeling of this is truly like nothing else I've ever driven. We're in the most beautiful place with massive homes. This is exactly where the EQSs will be bought here in Silicon Valley, tech focused, people that care about quality. 
and wow it is so good and I have the suspension in sport right now which is as aggressive as I can get in this car maybe the 580 will have a sport plus and it's still soaking up the bumps wonderfully well wonderfully well the heads-up display is giving me so much information it's giving me my current map like I would be looking at this screen here. So I have a physical color map display uh, in direction of travel. I have the speed limit. I have my driver assistance speed set. I have my current travel speed. I have if the car is steering itself or not. I have if lane departure warning is on or not. I have 1.7 miles till I need to make a turn. I have the time to my destination and I have the total distance to my destination. It's so much, but it's so easy. I just glance down and all the information's there and it's huge and I just go, okay, that's what I needed. And I never have to look at these gauges. And by the way, you can customize all these gauges. For example, I can go into this sport setting here and I get this like G thing and power meter that moves all around and the lights go different colors when you floor it. Lights go red when you're at wide open throttle and I don't like any of that. I just want classic, normal gauges with a speedometer and in a combustion car, a rev counter, or in this case, percentage of power works just fine. Also, when you are regenning, the percentage of power goes to zero and then you get a charge indication. So at 47 miles per hour, full liftoff, we get some charge, touch the brake pedal, and it goes to full regen. So yeah, 100% blending. I wanna drive the car in normal recuperation really quick. So the throttle pedal mapping changes completely to where sooner I, the sooner I get on the throttle, the more power I get, but wide open throttle's still the same. Now it feels a lot more natural. And this is a, a kind of a downside to me because I prefer one pedal driving or the most amount of off throttle regen that I can have paired with a really good solid brake pedal feeling. And I, it's just maybe early software, maybe this will get better, but right now this car doesn't have a good brake pedal in increased regen. In the current mode that I'm in though, coming on the brakes even around the corner, it feels a lot more natural, but it requires a lot of pedal travel and it's not really sharp brakes. I'm curious if the 580 has a different braking system and I'm also curious if the E53 AMG will brake better than this car. We will have to find out. So coming up on one of my favorite roads right here, this is kind of where I always hang out. It's a tight road. So let's go down here and see how the EQS does. <laughs> Look at this road crazy this car is so big on such a tight little road bicyclists around we want to be careful this isn't a car to shred but it's a car that at least my impression is is masking masking its size look at this hard left hard right whoa really magical i know i keep repeating myself and that's the point of this video this is my first experience you guys are along with me to experience this if you're looking for the full review like i said head to inside evs but i think it's important to film my first time driving a car because for me i sometimes go back and go oh remember how cool that was when i experienced this and then i get to share it with you which is amazing and we're on this amazing road that i love so much and we're in this car that's a technical marvel. And let's talk about that really quick. I think we are in the battle of, I don't, I hate using the word legacy car companies because I don't know, maybe it's not fair to them, maybe it is. Maybe they deserve the terminology. Oh, pitching it in, full power. Oh yeah, baby, we can slide it, what? <laughs> it's driftable. <laughs> this is so stupid. It shouldn't do this. <laughs> what? So, okay. Consider me completely sold on this car. Completely sold. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let me slow down because I'm actually getting myself car sick. That's a thing that's happening to me recently when I drive fast. I get car sick, especially if I haven't, if I haven't eaten yet and I haven't eaten yet. So, um, back to comfort mode. Now we're in comfort, suspension's changing. Air suspension standard, of course. Uh, EQS is sort of this technical marvel of a car, which means we get crazy integration of driver profiles, three screens, amazing MBUX, the craziest air filtration system that's telling me everything. And it all works together seamlessly. There's nothing left unfinished here. It's not like, 
oh, we're putting the final touches of our design, our UX, our HMI experience, you know, how the, the human interacts with the car, um, which is what happens with a lot of these new startup electric vehicle makers. Rivian, for example, I noticed their cameras were really laggy and I hadn't driven it, but I, spe speaking to Tom, it was like, it's like 95% done. And Lucid, like some of the buttons didn't work and I'm still crazy impressed by the Lucid. And I still think, you know, for a lot of people, that's gonna be the car to have over this just because it wins so well on numbers and the car still drives amazing but it's not quite complete when we experience the car here it's still pre-sale not on sale but it's like Mercedes has been doing this for over a hundred years and it just works and the screens are snappy and the route planning works and that's the impressive part it really is just nice to drive a car that's fully baked my impression I would like to see some some brake pedal tuning though so I think we've learned it's unbelievably comfortable in the city. It's unbelievably nimble on a back road like this. Oh, traction control kicked in because when I put it in comfort, it turned traction control back on. I wanted to kind of slide it there. Um, <laughs> it's crazy that a luxury sedan can drive along this road, even when you drive it stately, like it, pretending like I was chauffeuring someone, the way that there's no body roll, the way that it goes around the corner is, I am just blown away, blown away. So what do you say we get it out on the highway, we test all the driver assistance stuff, we test the noise levels. By the way, windows down, sunroof open, really nice to open, and you can even open it farther. Oh, it sounds so cool. By the way, it smells amazing out here. It's just the smelling smell of trees. So fresh. And even the uh, Mercedes agrees. It shows 1 p.m. 2.5, which is pretty low. Don't know what that means, but I think the air is clean. <laughs> and we are contributing to the clean air with no local direct emissions from this vehicle right now. Of course, there's always a bit when you charge, especially if it comes from not a clean source, but Cruising windows down is the way to drive this car, nice and slow. You join me on the highway now, and can I just say, I just merged up. The power is great. This car is not about acceleration. It's got all the acceleration you need. 5.5, 5.4 is fine. The noise level in here is dead quiet. What the loudest thing is the air conditioning fan. Let me just turn that off really quick. you know it's not dead silent and you do hear a little bit of road noise it's like you know I know I'm in a car I can hear the tires hitting some things but it's definitely the quietest car I've ever been in or at least one of them but it's so well I'm next to a truck with a rattling bed like this is crazy so noise is unbelievably impressive now we get to driver assistance. So there's a whole bunch of different menus that range from understated, sport, classic, that's the one I prefer, navigation, assistance, and service. I am gonna put it in the assistance menu. This turns the screen into like an autopilot screen from like a Tesla. I can see each lane, I, it knows all the cars around me, and it puts a little green thing around the car I'm following. Same thing with the augmented reality heads up display. And it's doing everything really well. So I have a couple different options. I can turn the system on and off. I can set speed by swiping up and down. So swipe up to 70. If I push, then it goes five miles per hour increments. Uh, the steering wheel gets really fingerprinty, by the way. I have the same thing in my Sprinter. It drives me nuts. And so that's a downside is this piano black, but it feels nice when you touch it. But yeah, it gets a little fingerprinty. It also is doing eye tracking. So it's watching my eyes right now. It has a driver camera system that um, I enabled. And so I can see the little infrared ports and yeah, it's just watching everything. Now we're on like this bridge going over somewhere. I don't even know where we are. Somewhere in the San Francisco Bay area. Um, went from route one. Now we're going to uh, an Electrify America DC charger, 350 kilowatt charger. I want to see what this thing charges at. Problem is it has so much range. I'm trying to run it out of juice and it won't run out. Um, I was blasting the heat, then the AC. I'm like trying to be inefficient. <laughs> These big battery EVs, trust me, they just, it doesn't even matter anymore. They all have enough range, seriously. What matters more is the charging strategy of the car, to me at least, because that's what you need on a long road trip. And uh, 
Mercedes assures us good good quality of uh, charging curve. We'll see. Let's talk driver assistance. When I set the speed, the steering is locked in the driver assistance mode, and I'm just going to take my hands off, pay attention, uh, and see what happens here. So amazingly competent lane centering in a straight line. Here comes a corner, just guiding or, or watching the wheel. Wow, look at this, no ping-ponging. There's a lot of trucks going on, a lot of weird lane markings here. It asked me to put my hands on the wheel there for a little bit, but it's still steering. Still doing it. I think it has the indication that it says it wants me to touch the wheel, there it is. But I'm not touching the wheel, I just wanna see what it'll do. What's it gonna do to get my attention? It's dinging, I get the big touch the steering wheel icon here in the dash. I'm covering the wheel, I'm covering the accelerator pedal, pedal in case it decides to slam on the brakes. It's still steering. And I have to take over because this truck is coming in. So lane change to the left. By the way, it does make auto lane changes. We'll try that here in a little bit. Let's put the distance to the closest. There we go. Speed up and let's cruise in this lane now. So amazingly competent lane centering no ping-ponging like I had mentioned that is true here as well even considering the fact and again I'm just touching the wheel tell it I'm still here even considering the fact that these lane markings are just almost non-existent it's doing a fantastic job will it make a lane change on a non-existent lane mark road like without zero hesitation and this is not like a well-marked road What more do you want out of a car? Seriously, like, I understand the sporty aspect, right? But this isn't a sporty car. I thought it handled unbelievably well, but it did feel wrong hustling it down a back road and power on over steering. And maybe I had some fun off camera as well, um, sort of testing the rotational yaw angles of the car. Is that the right way to say it? Look at that, it accelerated to a pass, even on the right, which you're not supposed to do. Um, and it, and it did great. We're in city traffic, so whatever. But, like, that was amazing. It's just so quiet and smooth. You feel nothing. I mean, you could just balance an egg anywhere in this car. It'd be just fine. So I just want to see what happens now when I don't touch the wheel. We're just going to let it run until it decides to tell me to do something. And I'm here to take over. So I got my hands down by my knees. It's dinging. It's saying, touch the wheel. I understand. I'm not going to touch the wheel. Let's see what you do. It's probably going to be the same as the other Mercedes, but worth a try. We have literally no lane markings on the right, and it's still doing very competent lane centering. It's still dinging at me. Let's see what it does. Still dinging. All right. Beginning emergency stop. Okay. Whoa. Hazard's on, and it's slowing down. Okay. Taking over. And hazards shut off. Hazards are down here. Manual control. I think that's great. So it's going to slow down with the hazards on. And probably bring us to a stop. Smart. I like that. I wish it would like grab the seatbelt though, like the Audis do. I think that would be a better solution. Or like shake the wheel or hit the seat massagers, put the heated and air conditioned seats on. <laughs> do whatever you can to make the driver pay attention. But wow, that was pretty good. Pretty good. And it lets you go a long time without touching the wheel. Uh, although always keep your hands on the wheel. These are just driver assistance systems, not driver replacement systems. Anyway, we're on like the loudest bit of concrete highway, like I mentioned, on a bridge over the San Francisco Bay Area. Hyperscreen is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm coming around to it now after using it. For putting in destinations, boom, right there. For finding chargers, it lets you look for chargers between 50, 50 and 150, and more than 150 kilowatts. That's great. It tells you how many chargers are available when I zoom out. And when I do zoom out, it prioritizes the higher power chargers, the ones you want to see when you're looking at a larger map. That's impressive. Um, a couple of things I don't like. The first is adjusting the volume in the car. There's no like tactile little scroll thing. And I think that'd be nice. Oh, it just came up and told me my cell phone battery's low. Um, and it's pretty difficult to like adjust the volume, I think, perfectly. Because when you slide here on the wheel, it's a little bit touchy. I wish they kept the scroll wheel in this car. I think that would have given it a nice tactile feel, my impression. What else don't I like? Styling, okay. Uh, everything else is pretty, pretty awesome. Like there's, oh, and the brake pedal. So styling, volume knob, brake pedal. 
I mean, if there's the brake pedal, I still think is a pretty big deal, but like, there's not much to complain about here. Gotta say, really loving it. So, what do you say we go to the EA chargers and then uh, we'll call it a first drive experience? I'm just truly impressed. Very rarely do I drive cars that I'm like, I knew it was gonna be good, but I didn't know it was gonna be magical. I've never described a car as magical. That's this one. Unlike anything I've ever been in, truly. We have arrived to the charging station with, let's take a look, 54% state of charge. Seriously, tried to get it as low as possible, but I'm running out of time. 208 miles projected with 54% state of charge. So that's 400 miles just absolutely ripping on it too. Let's just shut the car off with this little button. Boop. I do like um, how when you get out, you don't have to shut the car off. When you lock it, it shuts down. But every time you get in, you do have to hit the start button, at least in my experience. Wow, this is a long car. Take a look at this thing. Just taking up almost the full parking space. Uh, I pulled up to a 350 kilowatt charger here because this is where I'm so curious. First off, will plug and charge work? Secondly, if whatever our peak speed is at 54% state of charge, we can pretty much assume that it's going to be that or better earlier on. I genuinely have no idea what to expect. So let's just take the handle. Oh, it's a little bit warmer than I would like, but this isn't a full charging test. This is the reason I do charging tests at night. Plug it in and let's see if the car gives us the correct charging data inside. Will it show us kilowatts? Will it show us how much we've added? What will it show? Man, this is a real serious car right here. So it shows 208 miles. Don't forget your key. Hmm. I don't think plug and charge is working well. They say it'll have it and it could just be that it's not activated for this particular car. So I'll just activate it with my app and I really care more about the charging speeds. And then when we get a full production version where we're gonna be able to test the car that's on sale, of course, that's when we'll go ahead and worry about the, I guess, uh, activation of plug-in charge, which really needs to happen for this car. This needs to be like the most seamless non-Tesla EV. Also, I wanted to show you these wheels. They are, wow, something, that's not for me. <laughs> I've now gone ahead and activated the charger with the app. So let's plug it in here. All right, here we go. There's some cool little holographic lights back here. That's kind of neat. And let's see if she'll charge up. Oh yes, cable cooling's going. Initiating charging. Let's take a look in the car, see what the screens tell us. It shows 209 miles. I love this. This will show us kilowatts right here. Let's turn off the climate control. So I got to hit the start button and I have it on like preconditioning mode. So now it'll turn off. And wow, 100% in 34 minutes is what it's predicting. 17, 18, 19, 20 kilowatts. Come on, let's see a big number here. At 54%, if this thing does north of 150 kilowatts, man, that would be, I would say the bar, the minimum for this kind of like top spec EV, but it's ramping up slowly. That's nice, I like that. 60 kilowatts. Come on, let's do more. 80, nice, 100. <laughs> By the way, I drove over here with the navigation system programmed in for the fast charger. So it will precondition on the way. That means it's warming up or cooling the battery. Whoa, look at this, 150, 151. Cooling fans just kicked on outside. 154, seems to be leveling off. Wow, you know, not the 200 kilowatts that Mercedes said that this thing would have, but I don't think it's even on fully uh, production software and this screen's just locked up. Come on, I mean, this is, it's not showing any data. It's just glitching out. <laughs> it's a good thing this thing shows us charging rate. So 154 kilowatts here, shows 33 minutes to 100%. 
let's let this thing charge up. I'm gonna keep an eye on it and see when it tapers off of 150 kilowatts. Just as soon as I stopped that clip, we went down to 143 now. So typical charging curve. I really don't think that this is terrible. Uh, too early to tell though. And I can't wait to do a full charging curve test on the production model. But uh, this at least 140 kilowatts at 60%, really not bad. Again, this is 108 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. Let's click the on button again. That's really, really not too bad. 100% in 32 minutes. So interesting, you gotta turn the car completely off to get this display. Now it shows zero kilowatts. Okay, why is that? Is it because I cycled the power perhaps? Charging has stopped, it doesn't show an error. It must be because I attempted to turn the car on. These are little bugs that need to get worked out. So we click unlock. Will it have the weird German coding? Yes, this is so silly. The Germans don't understand that we have this little button on our CCS units and they make us hit their type two unlock before we pull ours out. Just leave the latch open guys, come on. <laughs> so let's uh let's restart this session and then we'll try and uh, go again i feel like we're on another out of spec road trip playing around with the plugs i've activated the charger again and in we go let's take a look now my guess is we got uh we'll get another peak of about 150 kilowatts as it pulls pack voltage up and then of course once it reaches peak then it'll kind of cap down so let's take a look here oh let's turn climate control off so it does that every time I unlock the car. That's a setting I turned on. And now this screen is off. So rather than trying to cycle the power like I did before, let's do it this way. There we go. Now we're ramping up the power. Nice. Let's see what it peaks at. So at least here at 63% state of charge, we've come off of max. We're now sitting at 130. A little bit of a difference than what Mercedes engineers have quoted me, which is 200 kilowatts all the way to 80% was one of them. The other one was a like pretty high state of charge up to, uh, or I should say pretty hard charge rate up to about 80%. They said it had come a little bit off 200. I would say 130 is a little more than a little bit off. And um, yeah, you gotta keep opening this door to keep this screen on. 130 kilowatts is where we're sitting right now. So uh, yeah, I would say that's not the end of the world. It's fine, but it's not class leading. It's not 30 minutes, 10 to 100, like what Mercedes have said. I think this requires further testing with a production car once we're able to really test the full charging speed of the vehicle. And a little bit of an update for you, 78% state of charge. We're at 115 kilowatts. So definitely following like a normal internal charge ramp down. And, uh, but I would say not as impressive as I had thought in my head. And definitely at least based off of this, I'm gonna be more than a competent road tripper. I mean, we've only been plugged in for about a, a cumulative maybe 15 minutes and we've gone from 50 to eight. 50 to 80 percent or so but i think uh in general this doesn't lead the way for dc fast charging like lucid or tycon will just based off of my experience and there you have it that's the very basic initial test of the eqs dc fast charging of course we're going to spend more time doing proper dc fast charging tests at night when the stations aren't crazy hot who knows any sort of limitation we could have run into but i will say it wasn't nearly as good as i was expecting but it's not bad it's really awesome i just don't think the quoted figure of 10 to 100 percent in 30 minutes is accurate based off of this first test but again that's what this whole video is just an initial test of the car and i don't want to draw any conclusions from the charging just because when i do my own charging test sometimes i spend five days straight to get a good charging test and it takes a lot of time and running the cars down and all of this stuff so let's reserve judgment it's going to be more than fine for a road trip like this but it's not as amazing as I was thinking. And here you guys go, the full interior. I don't think you were able to really get a sense of it before, but this is the hyper screen. Now I've gone in previous videos and shown you everything about this, by the way. So home button brings up the menus. There's two different views. This is what they call, I forgot what it is, but sort of this zero layer approach. So you have music down here, phone calls, driver profiles, and depending on what you have going on, it will pull up different little orbs and then home brings up all the menus. So for example, EQ is your 
charging stuff. So you can, of course, set your charging limit. You can go eco charging. We talked a little bit about this range consumption. Um, you know, amazing uh, uh, system here. It's so snappy, really is. Like this is one of the best infotainments, I think. I think personally, I would keep it out of the zero layer approach. I don't really remember how to swap it at the moment, but look at all the settings that you have for this car, just so many. So you have all of your driver uh, assistance settings, for example, even things like, you know, do you want it to warn you when you're tired? You can have it do this. You can have your sound experiences, which I tried, but actually didn't like. I know they put a lot of mode into, uh, a lot of work into it, but I don't like it so much. Creep function here, for example doors, lighting, system stuff, such as like, uh, you know, your audio systems for the Burmester sound system, which is a good system. Wouldn't say the best I've ever heard, but really better than almost any electric car I've been in. The passenger display doesn't work unless someone's sitting there, but um, I have it set to this compass. You can change what that is. Here though, let me just show you a couple different things. You have all of your different views. So, you know, all of your different, uh, you know, sort of things that you have going on on the highway. I tended to use the assistance mode, which I really enjoyed. It even gives you a, a demonstration of like what's going on with your brake lights and stuff like that. That's cool. Everything there is cool. Um, this is how you control all of your seats. Everything's just totally um, crazy. But even like when I talk about the integration of the German stuff, that no one else can do. Let me share a pretty cool example with you. You can tell one of the large focuses of this car was focusing on NVH, noise. And if you're driving around the city with your air conditioned seat on and you get below about two miles an hour, it actually turns down the fan slightly. And I couldn't notice this until I was really listening with the with the music off and the fans off, but it actually dips the fans in the seats so it's not an unpleasant level of noise. So I was impressed with that I thought it did really well. And, um, you know, the, these little details, this is the stuff I just love so much. And I got to say, I'm sad that I have to get out of this car for the day. I'm going to drive the 580 tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, yeah, can't, can't wait to share more with you guys. Uh, maybe we'll do a separate little video with the 580, but what a machine truly is. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.